All right, we got past the political revolutions and now we're gonna move on into the industrial revolution. But we need to talk about, about um, where it comes from. And so what you need to know is that a variety of factors, including environmental, will contribute to the growth of industrial production uh, during the 18th and 19th century that we call the Industrial Revolution. We're going to talk about a number of these. Uh, proximity to waterways, the geographic distribution of resources, growing urbanization in Western Europe, uh, improved agriculture, the legal protection of property rights, um, access to foreign resources, and the accumulation of capital. And then we take all of those things and we are going to develop what is known as the factory system of manufacturing manufacturing, which will concentrate labor into a single location that leads to more labor specialization and increased production. So a closer look, what is the Industrial Revolution? It's a period from the mid 1700s through the 19th century, the 1800s, where changes in agriculture, manufacturing, mining, transportation and technology will impact social, economic, and cultural conditions of this era. It originates in the United Kingdom and from there is going to spread to other countries in Western Europe, across the Atlantic to North America, the United States, um, eventually Japan, and later the rest of the world. It is centered on the move from cottage industries to the factory system that will concentrate labor in one location under one roof. We're going to spend the rest of this day, though, talking about uh, the factors of causation, why the Industrial Revolution begins, when and where it does. Um, in England, they've got proximity to waterways. Early industrialization requires access to rivers to power factory machinery. Uh, rivers and canals in England will also allow for easier resource movement and the shipping of products after production. England also as an island nation with many rivers and seaports provides access to resources uh, to, from distant markets um, and overseas markets. With regard to the geographic distribution of coal, iron, and timber, uh, we want to recognize that at this point in the mid 18th century, England as a relatively small nation confined geographically by its island status is, is got a depleting resource of, of timber. Uh, their forest lands are not what they used to be. And that's going to push the English to a new energy source. And that's going to be coal. Um, and, and England's got available and accessible supplies of coal and iron, which will each be instrumental in the Industrial Revolution. Coal mining is also going to contribute to the development of the steam engine. The very first steam engines were, were created to pump water out of coal mines. Um, and obviously then that technology is later gonna be used in steam powered factories and railroads and steamships. To have an industrial revolution, you also need urbanization. You need a lot of people. And Western Europe, Europe has experienced a population boom uh, since the 1600s as new foods uh, via the Columbian Exchange um, are going to now make their way into Western Europe. And so populations are rising um, and many of those new people will be moving to urban centers. And this is going to feed the factory systems that require labor to be concentrated into smaller areas. There's also going to be improved agricultural productivity during this era, more efficient farms, um, and like I said, the induction, introduction of those American crops, especially the potato and corn, uh, will require fewer farmers, leading to a migration of more people to urban centers. England also offers legal protection of property and contracts. Um, in the 18th century, England offered a relatively stable political system. Uh, there wasn't a fear of, of a toppling of the government or the legal system. And legal protections for private property patents. If you invent something, you can uh, benefit from it. And um, contracts that would protect entrepreneurs and their business prospects, which just serves to encourage more of that activity. Um, there is access also in England to overseas resources and markets. The fact that England is an island in the North Atlantic um, is going to set them up well for overseas trade. We also have in England a, an accumulation of capital for further investments. 
Capital is anything that can be used to create wealth. Uh, but in this case, we're literally talking about financial capital, like money. Um, and, and England has already a couple centuries, by the time we get to the, the mid 1700s, almost 200 years of joint stock companies that people could invest in and get a return on their investment. And so you have this this growing middle class, um, which we're going to refer to as the bourgeoisie um, through this through this unit, a growing middle class that has investment capital to put into new endeavors, allowing for additional growth in the industrial economy. The Industrial Revolution also centers on the development of the factory system. Um, this is a, a new um, method of labor moving away from earlier cottage industries. A cottage industry is like, you know, the shoemaker who's making a shoe from beginning to end in his little home uh, workshop. The factory system doesn't have a shoemaker anymore. The factory system is going to break up, or as Adam Smith would describe, divide labor into the various component parts of every product that is being made. This is going to require workers with less skill. And workers with less skill can be paid less and they're more easily replaceable, which can drive profits up for factory ownership. Eventually, the advent of electrical power will allow those factories to be safely opened further away from rivers <coughs> and operated 24-7. Pardon me. So the big three, what do we need to take out of this? First, the Industrial Revolution begins in England in the mid-18th century due to a number of factors, including access to resources and large urban populations. Legal protections of property and contracts, along with the availability of capital, contributes to the rise of industrialization. And the factory system is a new labor system developed in the Industrial Revolution era that um, uses low-skilled and low-paid labor to mass manufacture uh, goods. We'll see you next time.